Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Marcus Aurelius, and this is Total War Attila, developed by the Creative Assembly and published by Sega. And I'm totally geeking out on this step nomad throat singing. It's just the music is so cool. For those of you who are familiar with my channel, it will come as no surprise that I intend to play the Eastern Roman Empire. But for those of you who may be new to my channel and don't know much about me, you may be asking yourself, why would I watch this series when there are like 50 dedicated Total War channels already on YouTube that are playing this game and quite possibly the Eastern Roman Empire? And the answer is, if you're interested in high level elite gameplay and you're interested in watching somebody who will teach you how to be a better Total War player, then you probably should check out one of those other channels and not my series. But what you can get from my series that many other channels don't offer is that I consider myself to be kind of an amateur historian of the ERE or the Byzantine Empire. And as a result, I intend with this series to interweave the gameplay with talks about history, the actual real history of the ERE, and not only them, but the nearby tribes and peoples, individual characters from history, and also just questions about the time period that I want to answer in particular episodes. Unlike previous series, where I either spent half an episode speaking about history or nothing at all, I hope to, in this series, kind of do short little bites of history in each episode that don't interfere overall with the gameplay. We'll see how well I do on that, but that is my goal. I'm really excited about this game, however, because most games that feature the Byzantines, or the ERE, do so at the end of its lifespan, when it's fighting to survive. And this game takes you to the beginning. Even more so, it takes you before the beginning, when we're still talking about the later Roman Empire, or the Roman Empire of late antiquity, before it splits up completely and turns into what historians refer to as the Byzantine Empire. So, another thing that is going to make this series different from other series is that in my commentary, I'm going to be using a number of sources, both primary and secondary. And for those of you, like me, who've been out of school for a while, what that means is a primary source is a source that took place or was written at the time of the historical event. So in this case, that means sources from writers who existed in the Roman Empire at this time. And of those primary sources, there are two that really focus on this time period. The most relevant is one called the Fragmentary History of Priscus. And what's unique about this document is that it's really the only document that we have at this time that is written by somebody who actually met with Attila. He was an Eastern Roman diplomat who attended a conference to go meet with Attila at his base, which was at the time somewhere in what we now call Hungary. And so it's a first-hand account of Attila and the Huns. And so that's a really good source for this time period. The next primary source that we're going to look at is entitled The Later Roman Empire by Ammianus Marcellinus. And it covers the history of the empire between the years AD 354 and 378. Now that isn't this time period. This, well, this game takes place after that. However, Ammianus does mention the Huns in his work, and he also just gives a really great and neutral almost picture of what life was like for the soldiers, for the people during this period. So it's a wealth of information about the period just prior to this game, and so I find it really helpful to kind of understand what's going on during this period. So those are the primary sources. There aren't really a lot. But then we're also going to have some secondary sources. To start off with, I'm going to use a book called Lost to the West by a gentleman by the name of Lars Brownworth. This book is really great as an introduction to the history of the ERE, or the Byzantine Empire. 
it doesn't go into a huge amount of detail, but it does provide a really well-rounded kind of study of the overall empire. So what we'll be looking at the most is the early parts about the early empire. He also has a really awesome podcast that's totally free, and I'll provide a link to it, called The Twelve Byzantine Rulers. And unfortunately, he doesn't include the emperor that we see in this game, but he does include close emperors from this period, so it's worth reading, or listening to, I should say. And I might be a little biased as well, because many years ago, when I was going to Istanbul, which is Constantinople, obviously, to visit, I wrote an email to Mr. Brownworth, kind of asking for his suggestions on what I should see to get an idea of the Byzantine history. And his brother Anders wrote me back and gave me a lot of good ideas that I used. So that's always kind of endeared me to, to Mr. Brownworth. The next secondary source that we're going to look at is a book by the name of A History of the Byzantine State and Society by Warren Treadgold. Unlike Brownworth's book, this is a very comprehensive history that starts at the beginning and goes to the end. So it's going to provide a little bit more detail that fills in the blanks between Mr. Brownworth's chapters. The next secondary source we're going to look at, and one that's quite relevant to this game, is The Grand Strategy of the Byzantine Empire by Edward Lutwak. This book focuses on, as it you can probably tell, the war. The war and the strategy of the empire, and also diplomacy. And he has a lot of information on this time period and the strategies that the Byzantines or the Eastern Romans used in this time period playing one nation off against the other in such a way that they were able to ensure their survival despite numerical inferiority, and in many cases, battlefield inferiority through their unique and canny diplomacy. And finally, just as kind of a colorful addition, we're going to be using the graphical book Byzantine Armies 325 AD to 1453 AD by Dimitros Belazos. And this is basically just a guide on the military styles and formations of the empire from the beginning to the end. So there's not a whole ton about this period, but there is a little bit more about the army units and composition. And as far as citing things go, everything that I'm going to be saying in these episodes is from these sources. It's not obviously from me. I didn't do the research myself. So I'm not going to cite every piece of fact I say and say where I got it from. It's from one of these sources, and this is a let's play, not a master's thesis, so hopefully that'll be okay. If you have a question, by all means, let me know, and I'd be happy to answer it in the comments. So with that, I think we should watch the intro. So let's do that. I've got my quality settings to a degree where I think it should work well with recording. So we're going to go with the grand campaign. And we, of course, are going to be the Eastern Roman Empire. And right away, I just want to say that they definitely stylized this. While, yes, purple is the color of nobility in the Roman Empire, it was such a rare thing that they didn't just cover themselves in it, and it definitely wasn't on their flags and on the cloaks of the troops. And you see purple everywhere in this game. And in reality, it was quite rare. And actually, the kind of purple that they used is not the purple that we know it today, but more, they refer to it as the color of dried clotted blood, almost a red purple. So uh, I get though that it's stylistic and they have to differentiate the Eastern Roman Empire from the Western Roman Empire, and that's fine. I also noted that this symbol for the empire, the double-headed eagle, is actually not contemporary. It's, it's a symbol that didn't find use until about 700 AD, at this time and period, they were still using the Cairo, which is, you can see it here, it's the, the P and the X. And I've even taken it so far as to put that on my title cards instead of the official symbol. And while it may keep people from recognizing my videos as focused on the ERE in this game, it is more historically accurate. So right now, the ERE is being led by Emperor Flavius Arcadius Augustus, and he is actually the brother of the Western Emperor Honorius or Honorius, I guess, however you want to pronounce the H or not. They're Greek Christian. And even at this early stage, there are some rifts developing between the different Christian sects in the empires. And 
While again they are nominally and administratively connected in this time period, there are a few religious schisms that during this time period they have to work out, and we'll talk more about that. So the intro is the division of the Roman Empire has unshackled the East, allowing it to take control of the Roman world. The new administrative center of Constantinople has allowed the Eastern Romans to replace the antiquated systems throttling the economy and enfeebling Rome's emperors. As a result, new trade networks and fiscal reforms fill its coffers, all run by a centralized bureaucracy and a powerful state church. The East has safely weathered the storm of barbarian migration, often by diverting them into the West. However, the young Emperor Arcadius will have to negotiate barbarian threats, court intrigues, and the ever-present Sassanid menace to ensure that the last light of the Roman Empire continues to burn. Their cultural trait is imperial allegiance, which I have not tried but looks very cool. It basically allows the Empire to levy units from friendly hordes passing through Roman territory. Now, I'm not sure how many of these hordes are going to be friendly to us, but if we do get some friendly hordes, we will definitely try that. And the faction trait is economic powerhouse. Plus 5% interest on treasury at end of turn and a 50% trade tariff. So we're going to be really focusing on money. We're going to be focusing on trying to get as much money as possible, building our economy. Obviously, survival is a big issue, but we'll see. I'm going to keep the game on normal difficulty because I've been reading some posts in the forums by people who have been playing it and their experienced Total War players who are having difficulty on normal. So even though it says here, for players familiar with strategy games but new to Total War, from what I understand, it's still a very hard difficulty. So that's that. Let's see the intro. That music, so good. was filled with smoke and blood. The Roman Empire was divided from the shores of the Danube to the sands of Egypt and Arabia. The Eastern Empire sprawled. The West ripped itself to pieces, abandoning Rome, while the righteous looked east. new city where the spirit of Rome prospered her people grew rich and powerful paying neighboring kings to do their will and hopefully that will work for me as well given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. Romans of the Eastern Empire, those architects of a new age and forgers of a new empire to light the world, they made ready for war. Oh yeah, we are going to be lighting up the world like never before. <laughs> the late Emperor Theodosius decreed that Rome be divided, entrusting you with the bountiful East. Now the Empire is in danger. The Hunnic hordes are approaching from the Northeast, driving even the hardiest of barbarian tribes to flee before them. The Visigoths and their ilk migrate across your lands. They cannot be allowed to harm your people. Be mindful, too, of your southeastern territories. The Sassanid Empire is strong and will challenge you for dominion of the East. The West is guarded by the Western Romans. 
but they too are overstretched and under threat of barbarian invasion. It may be prudent to unite Rome under your banner and restore the Empire to her former glory. Prudent, perhaps. I don't know necessarily how possible that will be. Chapter 1. Preparation. They made ready for war. <laughs> so our objective, basically, is just to survive for five years. That tells you kind of how bad straits the Eastern Romans are right now. <laughs> if we do survive for those five years, we will gain 2,000... I'm not sure. What is it? Gold? Let's just call it gold for right now. So, okay. I hope that you're excited about this upcoming campaign, and by all means, if you have any questions about the history, leave them in the comments, and I'd be more than happy to answer them if I can. Also, if you have any suggestions with regards to gameplay and just getting me to survive this campaign, I'd appreciate that as well. I am a better historian than I am a Total War player, probably. <laughs> so, once again, I am Marcus Aurelius. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.